asking you about the quarterback preparation, but Maryland, they've had like five different guys. Um, they have, their starter is questionable, and then they played a true freshman uh, this past week. How do you prepare for Maryland at quarterback? Some things never change. From week to week, it's, it's the same story almost every game. So, um, you know, again, what you have to do, I think, is look at what their play calls are and what their formation groupings are, those types of things, and just see if they change based on who's behind center. Um, I think the pass game may change a little bit, but I don't think the run game will. Uh, and so I don't think you know, the, the offense is going to change a lot based on who's back there, and I know there could be several different options for them. And so uh, we'll just get ready with that thought in mind, and uh, we'll adjust within the game as needed. Jay, uh, Coach Ash has already spoken about this, but from your perspective, players like Tyreek Williams, Damon Hayes, KJ Gray, what are the long-term benefits of them seeing the field this season? Well, obviously, when we get the next fall, if you fast forward, they're, they're going to be much more seasoned and prepared to play, a lot like Isaiah and Bless. Um, you know, they were in the same role. I wasn't here, but I would assume something similar to that a year ago. Um, and they're more polished as young players in the program as a result of that. So obviously, we would hope that we would gain that same benefit for those guys, uh, given the number of repetitions that they've had. So that's where it helps you. Coach, I saw you used Kamoko Ture occasionally on pass rushing. Where is he at, and what's his progress been like, and maybe what's the outlook for the future? Well, he, he's progressed. Uh, you know, he came off of a couple of injuries uh, that uh, took a lot of his uh, spring and summer preparation away, and he really wasn't even healthy until we got beyond training camp and into the season. So, um, you know, he, his, his forte is pass rush, obviously, because of his skill set. So that's where we've utilized his uh, – talent so far most of the time, although he's getting into a little bit of regular down and distance defense also. But, uh, you know, really going to be up to him, uh, depending on how hard he works and the time he's willing to spend at it. Uh, he's very, very talented. Uh, we just need to now get into a position where we can see more consistency, you know, not just as a pass rusher, but as a, as a regular down and distance player. Anybody else? Yeah. Uh, Kind of building off what Sam said about the defense as a whole, but just the four guys, the sophomores, Austin, Wharton, Hester, and Hampton, who could feasibly be like three year starters together in the secondary, all sophomores. What's uh, What do you see from those guys, and how encouraging is that to have that group that could have a nucleus together for three years? Well, they all have great futures. Uh, they've all shown the ability to play and uh, play well. You know, the key is consistency, which I know I've already mentioned that. And uh, you, you, don't, you don't necessarily be improve your defense or your program just by having guys back who have played before. Those players have to improve, otherwise your result doesn't change. So, you know, the thing for us, obviously, is to change them physically from the time the end of the season is over with until we get the spring ball through the, you know, Coach Parker's um, strength conditioning program. And then for us to take them at that point, and uh, improve their football IQ and their intelligence of uh, you know the game itself and how it pertains to the position that they play. And if those things happen, then we will have a better result um, as we move forward into the next season. But is there something to the chemistry like that? They'll know each, you know what I mean, just from sure. playing thirty games together. Sure. Or something. Yeah, the guys that have played together and know each other, and they know how how they think and respond in situations and all those things. Uh, that certainly helps the the chemistry of the group and. Since some of the names that you mentioned specifically are defensive backs, uh, you know there's a ton of communication that goes into that <coughs> position group, um, you know, with different coverage checks and things like that that they have to go through. So there's a definite benefit there. Uh, Jay, from what you've observed of Darius and JPO this season, what they make them attractive to NFL scouts? Well, I, I'm not going to answer that because uh, I think what they look at and what I look at might be two completely different things. Um, you know the. the probably depends on the system that they would be looked at to play in. Uh, if there's just so many, it's like high school coaches trying to figure out what college coaches want when they look for and recruit. Sometimes it gets a little confusing. So I'm going to let them do what they do. I'm going to do what I do. All that I can say is they're a great young men. I hope they have an opportunity. I guess to follow up on that, um, what have they done or you know, how integral have those two guys been in laying foundation of what you want to do on, on defense this season? Great, this great. Um, you know, not just by what they've done on the field, but how they've come into this building every day with a great attitude and great work ethic and, um, 
you know, if, if uh, players would just follow their lead who have been watching them, which, you know, I'm assuming that's that's going on. Um, you know, their, their leadership has been invaluable, and, um, you know, that's part of the legacy that they leave behind, uh, is showing guys just how to do things on a day-to-day -day basis um, as a player coming up within our system. So really, really appreciate all they've done that way. Uh, Brandon Russell saw some more time after the, the injury at the Sam. C could we see him again against Maryland? Possibly. Um, if Tyreek's healthy, he'll play. Um, indications right now are that he will be. So assuming he gets through the practice week okay, he'll be ready to go. And uh, Brandon will be too if he's needed. It's me. Um, just, uh, just lost my question. <laughs> Oh, Sebastian Joseph, sorry. Yeah. Uh, my mind blanked. Sebastian Joseph, obviously he gets somewhat overlooked by all of us on the defensive line with JPO and with Darius and Quanzel when he was here. Just kind of now that next year it'll be kind of his defensive line. I mean, how has he played this year and how important is what he does at that nose tackle position? Well, it's critical. I think uh, no matter what sport you play in baseball, you talk about being strong up the middle, shortstop, second base, pitcher, catcher, center field. Same is true in football. Your, your nose, your tackle, your mic, your safety, the guys in the middle of your defense, they have to be good football players. So you know, the quality of his play is uh, integral to, to our success. And uh, you know he has played very, very well. Um, and, and at the same time, he's got some things he needs to iron out from a consistency standpoint with fundamentals. And uh, he's a hardworking guy with a really good attitude, and I would fully expect him to to uh, embrace the type of role that you're talking about as far as being able to step up and, and uh, step in and fill the shoes of some of those guys that have left. Or we're going to leave. we got one more game. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks, Coach. All right, thanks. thank you.